Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and ahead of Loki season two, perhaps the biggest question on viewers' minds is the character of Victor Timely, a Kang variant first revealed in the post credit scene of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, who we assumed would be the villain of these upcoming Loki episodes, but increasingly sounds like a more complex figure. I think we all need a further explanation of who Victor Timely is, where he's coming from. While I have you covered on the MCU version of the character, I think we need a real expert on the comics lore. So we reached out to another YouTuber you might know, Benny from Comic Story and get in here. How's it going, Eric? Good, Benny, I'm so glad you're here. I'm relieved because there's a lot to know about what the comics have done with me. <laughs> well, Victor Timely, to make this simple, is just Kang. Uh, so that's it, I guess I'll, I'll go. Okay, now. bye, yeah, this okay. was great. Anyway, subscribe <laughs> to Comic Historian, subscribe, okay. Yeah, 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 okay, so resetting the timeline here, there's gotta be more to him, right? Oh, there definitely is more to Victor Timely, kind of. You see, the way the MCU is doing it is every version of Kang is a separate character from a separate timeline. Mm -hmm. But in the early days of comics, all time travelers were just one version of Kang in a different point within his timeline. Okay. So after his initial defeat by the Avengers, Kang decided to go back to 1901 one and take all the knowledge he has about robotics and steam and all kinds of stuff and become Victor Timely to create a city that he could grow in Chronopolis, Chronopolis. I don't know how to pronounce that. And I, I think could, both are right. Both are right? Yeah, okay. if you read it, it's the Hermione <laughs> syndrome. It's, it's not a problem. But he creates a city that he's going to use to eventually conquer time. Mm -hmm. Victor Timely really only shows up for one annual and then kind of pops up in a few other weird Kang events, but always acts like he's not Kang, and that's because early days, a lot of these characters weren't Kang until much farther in the writing process, but that's not really what matters. Victor Timely's big contribution to everything is during Kang Dynasty, he basically is the guy that created a backdoor into every robotic, every character, mm. everything that had any kind of like semblance of robotic stuff. The big one being the Sentinels. Mm -hmm. And that's how he was able to take over during Kang Dynasty. Kang Dynasty is like eight different Kang plots all rolled up into one, including mm. an underground ground battle thing going on on top of all of that, but that's a different story for a different day. Mm -hmm. Victor Timely's gone at that point. Mm -hmm. He just was the guy that affected everything going on in Kang Dynasty and used as a reference point. So there's a lot to know, and there's a comics version of Kang Dynasty that might not be what the film the Kang Dynasty is doing. They might just have taken that name. Almost guarantee you it won't be with the right. amount of things that happen in that. If you don't know, Kang Dynasty ends with a giant Kang fighting a giant Captain America in the middle of space. Right. <laughs> so does that sound like something that the movie is going to do? No. Will there, there would be Sentinels at that point in the MCU? Probably not. Right. So together at the end of this video, we are going to recommend which specific Marvel comic storylines that you really need to read to prepare for the season of Loki, because do we need to read all of them? Honestly, no. Okay. Uh, I did binge read a whole bunch of them before this. The biggest issue with a lot of these early Kang storylines is the Kang storyline was changed as it was going. Mm -hmm. So characters like Immortus, when they're first introduced, don't even act like Kang or that they're referencing Kang or anything. Uh -huh. They're trying to manipulate Kang, only for us to later discover Amortis is actually a Kang timeline. I don't want to say variant because variants are MCU and that's right. a separate timeline, uh -huh. but it is Kang. But that's not referenced or really brought up until Avengers Forever. And then in Avengers Forever, they use comic book mumbo jumbo to separate the characters anyway. The biggest issue with a lot of these old Kang storylines is they're from like the 70s and the 60s. And so they just don't read easily and it's kind of a slog to get through. So I really can't recommend any of the old Kang storylines. And specifically, I think there might be a later Kang storyline that the film studio is more interested in. And by the way, this is actually part of a collaboration New Rock Stars and Comic Storian are doing right now. You can see me over on the Comic Storian channel in an episode of The Problem With. We are talking about Loki Kong comics and Loki in the MCU and why Tom Hiddleston's take on the character on screen seems to work, whereas the comics have struggled. So uh, be sure to check out Benny's appearance in the break room. So yeah, let's talk about the MCU version of Victor Timely and everything we know about him. In Loki season one, the Kang variant known as He Who Remains warned Loki and Sylvie about his other variants. If you think I'm evil, just wait till you meet my variants. 
We meet some of those variants in the mid-credits scene of Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, showing us the Kang Dynasty led by Immortus, Pharaoh Ramatut, Scarlet Centurion in this arena filled with Kangs. This imagery was taken directly from 1988's Avengers 292 by Walt Simonson, penciling by John Buscema. Now, a smaller Council of Kangs was actually introduced earlier in 1986's Avengers 267, but the big arena <laughs> showed up in uh, 292 in 1988. It, again, very weird because it was not so much of a Kang storyline. It was like uh, more of a Namor story, but then we just go to these other pages where it's Kang for a second. Well, it just continually, anytime they wanted to do time travel, they would make new time travelers. And then as time went on, the writers decided, what if they're all just Kang? Yeah. What if every time traveler is a version of Kang right. in his timeline? Exactly. So that's kind of what the MCU is trying to reconcile as well. The second of the two Quantumania credit scenes, the post credit scene, was actually seen from the upcoming Loki season. This is when Loki and Mobius attend this expo hosted by Victor Timely. The sign reading Victor Timely and his astounding temporal marvels. He tells this crowd of Victorian dressed attendees. Time is everything. It shapes our lives but perhaps we can shape it really chewing the scenery with the pauses between the words there majors but we know from loki season two footage that this setting is actually the 1893 world's fair in chicago so instead of 1901 in timely wisconsin marvel studios has placed victor timely at a famous time and place in real world history which that's an important change i think because in the comics victor timely correct me if i'm wrong chose 1901 specifically because he wanted to conquer the 20th century starting with like the first year yes that was his entire goal get yeah. ahead of everybody so that he can manipulate all robotics mm, right that was an important year He's kind of like a Jules Vernian bored challenge seeker yes. just trying to find something new to do. But 1893 Chicago seems like a specific choice in other ways. For one, it ties Loki to real world historical curiosities like season one did with the destruction of Pompeii in 79 AD, the D.B. Cooper hijacking in 1971. Also, the Chicago World's Fair was the world's first Ferris wheel and it was the backdrop of murders by the infamous serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. Will the show tie into that? God, I hope so. It'd be fun to get a reference to him. But really, it just seems like Marvel Studios wants to characterize Victor Timely is one of the great innovators in America at the turn of the century, kind of like Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla. Victor Timely's sign with its mention of temporal marvels reminds me of Professor Marvel from The Wizard of Oz. Go with me on this, Benny. I know I do this and viewers hate it, but... Um, We're going to The Wizard of Oz? We're going down the yellow brick road. All right, I'm down with this. We have to. So... <laughs> Professor Marvel, played by Henry Morgan. He's a traveling con artist, a magician who served as the analog for the wizard himself and actually plays multiple characters in the film, like the wizard himself and the Emerald City gatekeeper. Who rang that bell? And in, in Sam Raimi's 2013 film, Oz the Great and Powerful, a film that oddly cameoed in the MCU in episodes of WandaVision, James Franco's take on the wizard begins the film in a similarly shifty miracle worker barking at a crowd of gawkers. I bring up these examples, not just because I'm going off on a tangent, although that is something that we do in the problem with and it's fun. It's what we like to do. Yes. And I just do this though, because I think the Wizard of Oz was totally an influence on the portrayal of He Who Remains in Loki season one as a man behind the curtain. And Sam Raimi directed Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and is being rumored to be directing Avengers Secret Wars. So it just kind of helps to know everything that's in that cinematic DNA. Even if like we forget it after we watched this video. I'm always amazed at the connections that you made. I never thought we'd be going down Wizard of Oz while I'm here with you. <laughs> it's tenuous, <laughs> but I think it's important. Wizard of Oz was arguably the most important story in this era of America in the late 19th century and early 20th century. You've convinced me. So, I'm gonna go rewatch all the Wizard of Oz stuff. Oh, one shot energy, huh? I think I'll try it. Whoa! <laughs> so what does one shot's focus shoe do? So, uh, one shot really is all you need. Begin your transformation with one shot energy today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash new rock stars for 10% off your order. By placing Victor Timely at a trade show in the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, I think Marvel Studios is trying to connect him to that same history that Tony Stark and his father Howard Stark were a part of because 1893, that year would be exactly 50 years, a nice round number, 50 years prior to the Stark Expo in Queens in 1943, where Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes saw Howard Stark unveil his early repulsor technology 
technology and that levitating car didn't levitate that long. But at this expo, there was also an exhibit for a synthetic man presented by Dr. Phineas Horton, which was a nod to the original android form of the human torch that was built by Phineas Horton. This human torch was a member of the invaders alongside Steve Rogers, Bucky Barnes, and Namor back in the early days of Timely Comics in the late 30s, early 40s. And in Avengers 133 to 135 in 1975 by Steve Englehart, artist Neil Adams pitched the idea that the Vision's android corpse originally came from Ultron 5, finding that original android human torch's corpse, wiping it of its memories, and reactivating it as the Vision. So that 1992 Victor Timely comic storyline retcons history so that Phineas Horton was mentored by Victor Timely. So we kind of see some connections forming here, possibly, with the MCU Victor Timely at the 1893 Expo, 50 years before the 43 Stark Expo, which had Phineas Horton and his synthetic man exhibit, there are just, I think, enough dots here to infer that Marvel Studios might be trying to draw a line between everything, among everything, I should say. In the comics itself, Victor Timely actually has a hand in creating the original Human Torch, which then becomes the basis for Vision. Right, so it's already there. All the, all the pieces are in place. And I think by putting him at this expo, that's Marvel Studios saying, hey, remember phase one? Remember Howard Stark and, and Steve Rogers at that expo? We're doing the same kind of thing just 50 years earlier. I think they're all going to be part of a connected historical timeline with Victor Timely starting it all in 1893. Okay, so here we go. Time for some recommendations, Benny. Based on all this info, we have to give the viewers one comic storyline from each of us before Loki season two. What do we think Marvel Studios cares most about when it comes to adapting Kang, Victor Timely, all these different variants on screen. Well, if you want to read something more current with Kang, Kang himself does have his own miniseries, which was really good and very well received. He also shows up in, this is gonna sound random, he's in Venom. Venom, since he just became the king of the symbiotes, also has the ability to travel through time, space, and different dimensions, and to teach him to do that, is Kang. But if you do want to read a classic Kang storyline, I don't recommend Celestial Madonna. I don't recommend the older stuff because it's just too wordy. It's too full. And even if you know what's going on, it gets retconned as you read more and more of them, which makes the older stuff far more confusing. But you can read Kang Dynasty. Kang Dynasty is the storyline where he finally does a big push to try and conquer the world. But you need to remember it's a late 90s comic book storyline. So it's got like 15 issues and four different storylines happening concurrently at the exact same time. But there is a core story you can follow in that one. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I think it's good to read at least the comic storyline that they took the title from because there's going to be some elements. You gotta imagine a lot of the screenwriters who tackle these things, they are discovering the comics the way the rest of the world are discovering these comics. Not mm -hmm. all of them grew up reading these issues, so they, they're gonna like pick and choose what narrative elements work for the cinematic story they're trying to tell. I mean, the core idea of King Dynasty is that through things like Victor Timely and Ramatat and Immortus, through time itself, he has set everything up for the big invasion. Right. Which sounds like we could be doing that with Loki. Absolutely. Like the version of the Kang Dynasty that we saw in that big arena, yeah, they might have been working together to just like plant little uh, treasure caches throughout history and weapons caches to kind of work collectively to best set up the future that benefits all of them. Yep. So I think it is useful to read that storyline. But personally, my favorite, and I've mentioned this in videos before, but I think what might be the best Kang storyline from the past 10 years, at least the one that I think inspired Marvel Studios just because the decision making pivoting to Kang would have started a few years after this storyline came out is the 2017 Avengers Unleashed Kang War storyline. And I just think the art in this is so good. So this is uh, written by Mark Wade, but the art's by Mike Del Mundo. And uh, the, the specific form of Pharaoh Ramatut on the jean jacket and Moon Knight was taken directly from Del Mundo's art of Pharaoh Ramatut. But this is just a really cool vision storyline where the Avengers just start getting pruned out of time and are it's from their point of view. They don't understand what's going on. But we realize that Kang has this Kang very Variant, Kang Prime at the end of all time, who has specifically been orchestrating all of it, all the different Kang variants. Now, a lot of Kang storylines try to reconcile all the different uh, versions and incarnations of Kang over time, but I think this one does it the best visually to show like the kind of spectrum of Kangs. But we learn that like Vision is just really good at like computing through the future. And it's, I think, one of my favorite Vision storylines of the comics because he is kind of this heartless, sentient android, right? And he has to make the decision of do we kill Kang as a baby? They apply the like Hitler baby a paradox to it and uh it has like the best ending of the way they defeat kang and i won't spoil it but like this is one where they don't just like whack-a-mole him out of existence not thinking that he's gonna pop back up somewhere they find like a really weird like specific way to write kang out of like out of his villainous timeline so i highly recommend it and i think like if we if I just looking at the characters who are on the playing board in the MCU right now, you have Vision, you have Hercules, you have Sam Wilson, Captain America, looking exactly as he does now in the MCU as he, as he did in that era of the comics. So yeah, I, I would just say, even if they don't pull it, 
for the movie. Uh, it's just a great read, so check it out. I mean, all you would have to do is end the Kang Dynasty movie with the fight of, you know, Sam Wilson, Captain America battling against a giant Kang, mm -hmm. and you could do your storyline, and we just have like a giant kaiju battle with the characters of the ending. We don't have enough kaiju battles other than <laughs> Moon Knight, right? Moon yeah. Knight was the only kaiju battle we had, and I dug it. Yeah, so there you go. Cool. Giant Sam Wilson, giant Kang slugging it out in space at the end of the entire movie. I think that could save the MCU. <laughs> we, right? just, we just predicted the ending. I think we did. We spoiled it for you. But again, we go a lot further into Loki and the comics in the episode of The Problem With over on Benny's channel, Comic Story, and available now. Subscribe to Comic Story and check out all of Benny's great video content. Buy his hot sauce. Thank you. Yes. His hot sauce is awesome. It's way better than McDonald's Loki sweet and sour sauce. That stuff's garbage. Uh, but subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. You can support us with some merch over at nerdriot.shop like this Ahsoka Fulcrum shirt. We'll have some Loki designs too, I think. Uh, you can follow me at EA Voss, follow Benny at Comic Story. And thanks for watching. Benny, this has been awesome. It's been a blast. Can't wait to see you again. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>